friends and welcome to Obsidian Soft. In today's class, I will explain about JSON. Don't worry, it's not a person's name. In our previous classes, we explored the dictionary block in MIT App Inventor. The purpose of the dictionary block will become much clearer once we understand the concept of JSON. But before I begin, a bit about my channel. I teach coding, mobile app development and mental maths on it. If you like the look of my channel, please subscribe and press the bell icon so that you don't miss any of the great tutorials that I've planned for you. Coming back to JSON. So what is JSON? JSON, that is JavaScript Object Notation, is a lightweight and popular format for storing and exchanging data where data is organized using key value pairs. So you should be able to see the link straight away with our MIT App Inventor's dictionary block, that is key value pairs. So let's look at this JSON example. The object starts and ends with curly braces. Inside the object, we have several key value pairs. The key name has the corresponding value John. This means that John's name is John. The key age has the corresponding value 25. This indicates that John's age is 25. The key hobbies has the corresponding values painting and gardening. This indicates that John has two hobbies, painting and gardening. The hobbies are represented as an array that is a list. The list is denoted by the square brackets and each hobby is a separate string or text within the array that is list. Hence, you can see that JSON is flexible and can represent various types of data including numbers, text, lists. It's widely used because it's easy for both humans and computers to understand and work with. Programs can read and write JSON data, making it a common format for transferring data between different systems and programming languages. So it is language independent. JSON plays a huge role in APIs, that is application programming interfaces through which different software applications communicate and interact with each other. When one application wants to request data or send data to another application through an API, JSON is commonly used to format and structure that data. A prime example is our ChatGPT app in which we communicated with the OpenAI servers using JSON. Now let's do a practical example of reading JSON. We have a JSON file that I got from the internet and it has a list of 1302 colors and it has color hex codes with their names, okay? So I will give this link in the video description and just go here to code and download the zip file, okay? And once it's downloaded, just unzip it and let me show what it looks like from inside. So I have this colors JSON file and let me open it up. And as you can see that it's a very long file and it has as it said, 1302 colors, okay? So what we are going to do is, we are going to read this file, but let's have a look at it first. As you can see that it starts with a square bracket. Remember, square brackets means it's a list. So it's a list. Within the list, we have dictionary objects. Curly braces means dictionaries. And we have the key value pairs, okay? So let's open up MIT Inventor and go to projects, start a new project. Let's call it read JSON. Okay. First of all, upload the JSON file that we downloaded. Now from connectivity here in the palette, drag and drop a web component. For screen one, make a line horizontal center, a line vertical center, drag and drop a text box from user interface. And let's me quickly rename it to color hex txt. Our app will actually read the JSON file into our system and the user can provide a color hex and press a button and we will show the color name okay let's quickly add a button below it and also a label for showing the actual color name to the user okay and I'm going to rename them appropriately 
So I've renamed them submit button, color name label and just empty the text from it and you can optionally make it font bold, font size 20. Now from storage, drag and drop a file component. This is needed for reading it into the system, not for interpreting it. For interpreting, we will be using the web component. So let's go to the block section. And what we need to do is first of all, make some global variables. So the first one is JSON and this is empty. And then we have a color list. Okay, so duplicate. And this is our color list because remember, the JSON file is actually a list of color dictionaries. So I'm going to make it an empty list. So go to list and get the create empty list block. So once the global variables have been made, let's go to screen one and get its initialize event. And in this event, we are going to read our JSON file, not decode it, just read it. Okay, so for that we will use file one's read from procedure and give it the file name. And what is the file name? Let's get an empty text block. And here we need two forward slashes and then the name of the file as it has been uploaded in the media. So two forward slashes and then colors.json. Okay, so make sure that the spelling is correct. Okay, otherwise there will be an error and then when the file is read successfully by our file one component, file one's got text event will be triggered. And here, what we're going to do is, first of all, we are going to set our global JSON variable to whatever has been returned by file one's got text event. That is the text inside the entire file. Now remember, that the text inside the entire file, the eventual result, the end result will be a list because it's a list of dictionary objects, the JSON file. So what we're going to do is we are going to set our color list to a decoded JSON. And how do we decode the JSON? We use the web ones JSON text decode. Now make sure that you use this one, JSON text decode. And we use this and provide it the JSON variable. Okay. Okay. Now we make a procedure for finding the color using the color hex code provided by the user. So Let's make a procedure and call it find color. Okay. And we are going to make a local variable. And this process is, is quite similar to the find procedure we made for our customer data app. Okay. So I'm going to make a local variable, a local variable. Remember again, a local variable can be accessed only in the place where it has been defined as compared to a global variable which can be accessed inside this entire area. So this local variable can be used only within this orange blocks. Okay. Again, I need a for loop because I have to go through my entire color list and here I'm going to use the for each item. And what is the list? The list is our color list. So this is basically the name of the color, let it stay the same. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to assign it this text that color name was not found. Okay. So this is the situation, the basic, the beginning situation that the color name was not found. Because remember that every color hex code might not have a color name associated with it. Okay. So this is our default situation that the color name was not found. And if it is found, we will update it accordingly. Okay. So here, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to go to control and the if then block. And here I'm going to check whether my value against the key hex inside this item contains the user provided color hex code. This will make more sense once I 
quote it in front of you. So let's go to text and get the contains block. And here, what is the text? I want to give it the value for the key hex for the dictionary item. Okay. So if I go to dictionaries, I can get get value for key. Okay. And here, what is the key? Now remember, look at our file. The key is hex. So make sure that you write it accordingly. So go to text. Key is H E X hex. And which is the dictionary? The dictionary is the item. Because remember, a list has items that are actually dictionary objects. Okay. And what is the piece? The piece is the thing I'm looking for that whether that piece is inside this text. And what I'm going to do is that I'm going to make it uppercase so that a search is not case sensitive. That is the user might be writing it in small cases or upper cases, but here it is in uppercase. So I want to make sure that whatever the user has entered as the color hex code is converted to uppercase. So if I go to text, I can get the upcase block and then I'm going to give it the color hex text. Okay. This one. Okay. So if it is found, that is, it contains the user provided color hex code, then I am going to set my this name. So get a setter for it to a join of a text block that says color name is space and if I duplicate this block and change this key by name I will get the color name see name for this item that was found okay the dictionary item and then there's no need to search anymore in the for loop that is our color list so I am going to break out of the loop by going to control and getting the break block. Okay. So make sure that you do it inside the if block and not outside it because that will make the entire loop run. Okay. So we want to break from the for loop once our condition is found okay if the condition is not found that is that hex code is not found then it will go through all the items in the list okay otherwise as soon as, we, as it will find the first one it will break out of it okay the first match okay and at the end what we're going to do is that we are going to set our color name label set color name label to this name that might contain color name not found or it might contain the actual color. The color name is something. Okay. So both the situations have been covered by just initializing it to color name was not found in the beginning. And so our color name label will be updated accordingly. Okay. And make sure that it is inside this orange area because this variable the name variable is a local variable and it cannot be accessed outside this orange block okay last but not the least when the submit button is pressed or clicked we are just going to call our procedure find color so we are done let me clean up the blocks okay So I hope you understood this class and learned about JSON and how to read JSON and how to interpret JSON. So please like my video and share it with your friends and family and thank you for watching my video. Have a good day and goodbye.